Mama vana sema Pen Dream TV. Pen Dream TV dia osia dem yopo. Yo, welcome to Pen Dream TV, the only channel that bring you the best in politics. If you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, like and also share for others to watch. Thank you. You can also join us join the discussion by sending us a voice note on the WhatsApp number shown on the screen, which is 0277-128-777. Thank you. Today, Elvis Bota of the MPP, the national the former national deputy organizer of the MPP. So came out saying he has seen nothing wrong with the statement Mustafa Gwandi made previously. He also defended by saying it's not a problem if somebody wants to defend what is right for him. Seeing the ISIS behavior, the best thing to do is to defend and protect the pilot and he's in support of anybody who would that they support the election in any means. In that much I do, let's listen to what he said. Which you can also come out with your view by leaving a comment at the comment section. Thank you. The voice. Yeah, <laughs> the voice went to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, we we'll proceed to our next topic for conversation. A very, very political one for that matter. <laughs> Unlike in 2020, we will use all means necessary to protect ballots in 2024. This is from the National Democratic Congress. Over the past few weeks, they've been speaking a lot. Um, uh, the the carrying of machetes and cutlasses to you know police stations, but this one is I think is from the national organizer of the party who spoke and said that they are, they are going to do everything within their might to ensure that ballots uh, are protected uh, come December 7, twenty twenty four. Let me go straight to you, uh, Mr. Ibrahim, to share your uh, exactly what you'll be doing to protect the ballots. Yeah, thank you very much. You see. If um, elections in Ghana are anything to go by and experiences together within and picking from the just ended 2020 election, we all know it's popularly said elections are won at the polling station. Now, to the, the 2024 approach, we know that the current administration will not want to relinquish power just like that. Though all economic indicators in terms of governance, security, every indicator within the Ghanaian context, I mean, in the economic measurements, this government has failed completely. But that does not guarantee a sure win for my party, the NDC. And the fact is this, if you see, look at the way we go into the election to vote, when it gets to the core of the campaign, getting to, to the 7th December day, you see that it moves from these uh, ethnic issues coming, and we have a situation where, if you study carefully, a particular party, the MPP, can just concentrate on two major regions, get any other from somewhere to add to the two uh, major ones, and then they're able to win power just by picking um, within the eastern and Ashanti region. And you see, the kind of politics we do in Ghana, it gets to that point, and it's not, it, it moves from these economic issues and economic indicators, and it goes like, this is my party, I'm NDC, and then I'm MPP, and those ones. Those variables are there, and we cannot downplay them. However, going into the election, the polling stations is the main issue. And uh, we have determined that we would protect and guide every polling station. And you see, that's why, if you look at the organogram of the party, we have branches. And the branches are based on the polling station. And the duty of every branch is to police a polling station. And that's how the construction is. So it's going to be that we have to police and guide everything. There's no way the, 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 the leader of the party has insisted already that there's not going to be a court issue. There's not going to be anything about going to court. We have to get it at the police station, right? Get our people to get out to vote and police every single vote that is counted. Then the coalition, you see, and I have seen, I was seen, I seen North for the by election, and I saw how. NDC for the first time, I saw the agency, the need to win that seat. It was so strong. And 
we went, we went, I was at a place called Ghana Camp. And the way we stood there for close to two days, no sleep, nobody moved till the election was over, we picked the results and moved to the collection uh, center. That is a test case for us, which worked. So it's going to be replicated across, but this is broader. And so, by this, all party people will know, and we're going to do it from the polling station. But the challenge we have is the electoral commission. This is where I think I will set it. This is my position, not the party per se, but this is my position. Now. Look, I have not seen the, 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 the hunger, the anger, a hunger within the party folks to deal with this electoral commission to get things done. And we saw that they tested this uh, assembly election with, um, without the use of uh, indelible ink, and it created a whole lot of issues. And that is why they will have to get back to IPAC, sit there and fight it, and keep an eye on them. If you are going to monitor the whole thing at the police station, it doesn't mean we should leave IPAC and then the electoral commission to do whatever they have to do. And I am aware that a lot has gone into preparing for this and next year. I want to see, I want to call on the leadership that I want to see more commitment and seriousness in the, this election. Look, this election is like communal labor. It's to save Ghana. Already we are all having issues with the way things are going, the hardships and everything, and there is the need, there is the need to lead it, to at least take part from these people, then we can restore hope in the economy and save a lot of people. So the election, it's a communal labor, and it has to be looked at and work at the polling station. And I am aware that at least everything is being done and put in place to police them from the micro level, that's the polling station, and that will aggregate into the major one. But I honestly, I'm not, I, I, I don't really like the vibe. They, 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 I don't feel that agency in, in, in going into this election. Look, we're all in this country, and when you have the MPP in opposition, when they want to come to power, you see the way they go about it. They kind of make it look like when you do not change, then the whole system will collapse, and it sinks. But trust me, it's my party, but I will say it, I don't see that agency. I don't see that, that, that vibe that people would relate with and see that we are really serious to take power. And it's like most of our people, when you listen to them and watch them, it's as if it's a done deal. But trust me, it is not. It's a battle and we must get all out. And I thank God we are from next year, the election year to go. But from people I have met, meetings I've attended and comments I've heard from people and I've seen posturing from the former president's office, there's going to be a lot of fire from next year. Mm -hmm. And the police station, every single election will be counted one from the police station. Mm -hmm. So you, you, do, you do agree that in 2020 you didn't, you didn't do things right? 2020, I will not say we didn't do things right. Because I was, 2020 what happened was, I was part of... Um, those who monitored Tema East in particular. And the Tema East was so uh, unique to the extent that the earlier uh, global won by three votes. And that because NDC was not vigilant that year. When they counted first, NDC candidate won, especially the, the, the parliamentary. Then he called for a recount. There was commotion. After they recounted, he won by three. An MPP in opposition will not allow another count. That's how he won and came and picked it. So I was there. What we did was to go to the collation center with our results. So we collected them from the polling station. By the 10 p.m., we were set with a raw collation from all the polling stations within the constituency before we moved to the collation center. And at the collision that there were attempts to bring in some other bags within with pink sheets, which we didn't, we resisted. And yet, at the end of the day, from that one, so I would say that in the 2020, it's not like we relax. However, there's work to be done. And we have to improve our game and up the game better than it happened in the 2020. We take lessons from 2020 and we get into this election stronger and better. Mm. and salvage the economy. Always. Um, I have maintained on this platform 
that we need to watch it. One of the cardinal problems, even beyond corruption, that is responsible for instability politically in the sub-region is poor electoral management system. Truth be told, if you have an objective, independent electoral management body, will it be necessary for any political party to have a coalition system? You answer me. You are the journalist here. Answer me. In the football pitch, do you find the players or the various teams critical about having their independent referees? They are all referees independent of the officiating referee. No. You see, if we create an electoral system that is transparent and with a sense of independence and objectivity, then half of the security problem is solved. Because everybody will know that there is a level playing field. Nobody is stopping you from your political gimmicks and gymnastics. But after everything is said and done on platforms and your door-to-door -door things and your midnight movement, on the day of joining queues to vote, when it comes to the element of counting or the management of the election at the polling station, if you have a credible electoral system, trust me, there will be no need at all for any political party to be having nightmares as to the legitimacy of the figures. All political parties are struggling to have coalition systems because of the lack of trust in the central coalition system of the electoral management body. And this is the same across all the countries, you know, in the region. All right? And Ghana is not an exception. If this hypothesis stands, then it tells you that ordinarily, we shouldn't have had the issue of making it look as if one party is daft if they are unable to coalate their resources. The main trouble, they may be daft, they may be careless, they may be reckless, they may be inept, but the real national danger is when, in the midst of the confusion, the electoral body itself of the country is unable uh, to, to objectively solve the problem. And where their activities are so much as though they are an extension of the campaign machinery of another political party in the same election. And this is the problem we have in this country. You see, the Electoral Commission has ceased to be the same after Afarijan left. The appointment of the beautiful Charlotte Osei came with its issues and suspicions. But the woman was vindicated when even an opposition flag bearer won and was declared, yes, uh, we can excuse, you know, the suspicions and the crying and the, you know, the whistle blowing of their system being hacked and all of that. Granted that they were all gimmicks to get the incumbent Mr. Muhammad then entrenched in power, the question is, in the end, was she able to do it? No. And is there even evidence that that is what it was? No. But fast forward. She was removed on very baseless grounds. I still don't understand. Now, afterwards, another beautiful woman was kept there. Jean Mess, and she is still there. Whose appointment has also been met with the kind of despondency the appointment of Charlotte Osei was confronted with. So you see, since this particular episode started, the Electoral Commission have not have ceased to be the same. It has become a compromised electoral body. You see, we need to be very honest in discussing critical issues like this. An objective analyst will tell you that in the face of the nature of appointments, 
and how certain key office holders are they easy ascended to that office when hitherto the advent of their ascendancy to some of those positions witness active political you know advocacy how do they become officials in their adjudication of electoral matters very questionable very questionable so this is where the problem is coming from and so is the security of the ballots at the polling stations all these police and other security people we take to the ballot boxes or the polling stations on elections days can be so corrupt i have contested two serious parliamentary elections and i'm telling you that the local dynamics of security management uh, sometimes it's not even about those the party in power okay it can also boil on whom the district commander and the regional commanders are when it comes to who goes to which polling station one day i'll tell my story of 2020 we are not stupid in this country i'll tell my story of 2020 one day and so if you understand the role the ec can play the EC and their presiding officers, if you know the role they can play for victory or for your defeat, you will protect the polling station. In any event, if these are the basis informing the decision of any political party, and I'm not by this even defending the statement of the NDC, the MPP is as much interested in protecting the ballot just as the NDC. So since when? You see, sometimes you people invite us here to just waste our time. Since when have protection of ballot boxes or polling stations become an issue? No, tell me, since when? Since when has it become an alarm for one party to say that we will, we will, we will actually protect the elections at the polling station? It's a good thing. We should encourage all political parties... To, look, the Supreme Court told us in the face of electoral irregularities in this country that elections are won at where? At the polling station. So it is only wise and reasonable that any serious politician should take a cue and seek to protect your political and electoral interests at the polling station. How bad is this? So the NDC have said they will be vigilant to protect that nothing untoward happens. They will protect it. If they protect it and at the end of the day, the objective figure says they have lost. That is it. They will know they have lost and they will go back to the drawing board to look at how to right their wrongs. I would have had a problem with the statement if they had said they will resist any declaration that is not in their favor. That would have been news for us to talk about. Unless there is more to the article that I am not privy to. Mm. I have heard that they say Oh, someone have incited, have incited others to go with guns and machetes, machetes and what? Yeah. Was that truly said? Yeah. Well, that is quite condemnable. But again, can you blame them if there is no trust for even state security at the ballot? You see, you can't fight an armed man with bare hands. The only time you can be man enough to fight an armed man is when you are armed so if your testicles have been stepped on once i think the next time you are in that same sitting posture you hold a long stick just to ensure that no feet comes towards where your testicles rolls these are the danger signs these are early warning signs to electoral violence and the 2024 elections in particular is a contest between two very desperate politicians very desperate two very desperate politicians their level of desperation the same their level of lies the same their level of con attitude the same their level of incredibility the same Watch them, Mr. Mahama and Mr. Baumia. 
Huh? They are twins from different wombs, politically. So, such an election will convey dynamics never witnessed before. And so, your preparation should be a 360 degrees preparation. Whatever it will take Ghanaians to protect an objective ballot, I will support it. Do you think the people who were shot in Techiman South, am I correct? Yeah. Do you think if they were armed also, the situation wouldn't have been a little better? You see, if you understand international security, especially when it comes to nuclear and weapon proliferation, there is a theory by Joseph Nye that says that more is better. If I am the only one wielding a gun here, the rest of you becomes powerless. As little as I am, I'll tell you to shut up and you shut up. Because I have a humble friend that can humble you. You understand? But if I have a gun, and you have a gun, or maybe a more powerful one, Charlie, we will we'll hold very diplomatic conversation. Are you getting it? Eh? Even if we have what we call military diplomacy, that is what happens. They all, both parties know the military capability of the other. So you are minded to conduct yourself appropriately to avoid clashes. It may be a sustained cold war, so to say, but it is better. The state that should defend us were shooting people to death in Techima. What have we heard about it? People, they are hiding under technicalities and legalities to, 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 to sweep the matter under the carpet. So if I'm going to vote, I'll go with a gun if I have it. For fear that some shooting might be happening. If not for anything, so that I can also be given some warning shots as a deterrent measure as I run for my life. Don't you agree with me, Bless? No, wouldn't you do say? Let's, let's, the human being is psychologically rational. And our choices are in tandem with that level of rationality. Wouldn't you? If you are traveling along a route, that route is noted for notorious armed robbery, and you have a gun, will you leave it home? You see, we all preach the gospel, but the gun and the Bible are all weapons. You choose your weapon on the basis of your characterization of the adversary. If I have a demonic attack, my weapon is the Bible. No, you can't shoot a demon. Are you getting it? With a physical gun. So demonic attacks, terrestrial attacks, my Bible is my weapon. Any other physical attack from land gas to armed robbers to any form of intimidation, the gun is my weapon. A gun is not, let's not demonize guns. They are good. It depends on the hand that is holding it and the mind that is controlling that hand. I, I mean, bless, are you learning? Are you getting it? It's, let's not be quick to condemn certain things. If we must go to the polling stations with determined civic responsibility to protect the ballot, by extension, protecting the security of the state and livelihood, vulnerable ones for that matter. Isn't it better? These kind of statements are early warning statements to tell you that nobody has trust again on the EC, nobody has trust again on the security apparatus, and now the court itself, from the 2012 election petition, we in the NPP felt that, that 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 decision by the Supreme Court was not it was not fair to us. The NDC, the NDC now have reason to believe that the occasion they went to court, the justice system was not fair to them. So if the judiciary is not a place to go to, and you cannot trust the electoral system, and you cannot also trust the security, who at least may shoot to kill you when you talk. What will you do? Are you not on your own? And will it then be wrong 
if you take steps for self-protection. These are the critical things we must interrogate. Look at the kind of things we are, the easy, the controversy, the is anything you have to suffer when it comes to policy making. Any policy decision you must suffer uh, to explain its understanding, all right, is not a good policy. A, one of the characteristics, especially security policies, except those that are shredded in secrecy and in confidentiality for strategic purposes. Public security policies must be simple, straightforward, eh, even to the lay average person. But look at how the EC is always struggling to justify its decisions. What is the sense in the kind of registration system where you expect somebody from Narbo eh, to actually travel to Nerdoli Township? To register when that person have critical issues with buying salt, ah, huh? one Ghana city salt is a problem in most of these communities. So it's an intelligent way of, you know, actually disenfranchising some of these people. What is the sense in it? But look at the justifications we've been hearing. That aside. There have been this controversy as to even the requirement for the registration. At one point, something is good for voter registration. It is not good for Ghana card. It is good for Ghana card. It is not good for voter registration. My brother, you see, when the electoral management system becomes subject to extreme public reservation, I'm not even talking of the criticism that comes from opposition party. When ordinary lay people who are not interested in political partisan colors are having reason to just say, hmm, and sit down, there is a huge timing bomb. If there will be problems politically in this country, it will not be caused by the NDC or the NPP. I tell you, it will be caused by the EC. They are, you see, those people they pick as presiding officers. Some of them, very funny looking people, the troubles they can create. So we need to go back and look at our electoral management system very well. And I pray that, and I keep admonishing, there are certain thematic issues that you must just invite us here, and that is just the topic. We talk about only that thing with in depth mastery of a surgeon on the subject and prefer policy briefs and recommendations and walk away. That is how Pan-African should distinguish itself. So that you don't only become a media channel, you also become a knowledge production house. Away from all the empty noises a lot of these media houses out there are looking for. Mm. Which party gives them money and buys them their key employees' cars is the one they, 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 they talk about. Fortunately, Pan Africa is not like that yet. So let's we can only improve. <laughs> so yet, <laughs> yeah, I'm only scared that if we don't put in certain things, right, uh, it will get. Are you getting it? Right, get so you. we are all going to the polling. I'm concluding. We are all going mm -hmm. to the polling stations in elections 2024. Huh? with a second caution mm. to protect the ballot. I believe if the ballot is protected well mm. in an objective voting, MPP will win. Right. So I will protect it. Right. So let them also protect. They believe that if it is protected, they will also win. Is right. that all? Right. Thank you very much, Elvis. <laughs> let me come to Mr. Pratt. <laughs> Thank you once again for watching. We really appreciate your time. Do subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Hit the notification bell because you don't want you to watch a dead update. Be the first to watch any update that will be uploaded onto the platform. You can release your comments as well. Leave it at the comment section or send us a voice note on the number three on the screen, which is 0277 128 777. Thank you. Stay blessed. Uh, to my best of knowledge, without any biases, I append them to you.